This is part 22 of Blazor tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss route parameters in Blazor with an example. At the moment, employee list component is displaying the list of employees. When we click view button on any of the employees, nothing happens. What we want to do is redirect the user to another component, employee details component. And this component must display the details of the specific employee. For the details component to be able to do that, we want to pass the employee ID in the URL from this employee list component to the details component. Our first step here is to create the new component employee details component. Since this is a new page that we will be navigating to, let's add it to the pages folder. So right click on the pages folder, add new item, select raise a component and let's call it employee details. We don't want to use the mixed file approach. We want to keep our component C sharp code in a separate code behind class. So first let's get rid of this at code block and remember the naming convention. If our component is called employee details, the code behind class will be called employee details base. So to the pages folder, let's add a new class file. Name it employee details base. For this class to be the component code behind class, it has to inherit from the component base class. Bring in the required namespace by pressing control period and then to link this class with this component, we use at inherits directive and then specify the name of the class, employee details base. To be able to reach this component, let's specify a route using at page directive and the route is slash employee details slash the ID of the employee whose details we want to view. So ID here is the route parameter and in the component class, I'm going to create a property with the same name. The data type is going to be string and the property name is ID. Here is the important bit. I'm going to decorate this property with parameter attribute. Now here's what we have done so far. In the component view, we included ID route parameter and in the component code behind class, we included a property with the same name and decorated it with the parameter attribute. So with these two pieces of code in place, if we now navigate to this URL, notice the path here slash employee details slash two. So this is the same route that we have specified using at page directive. So now Blazor router is going to automatically map this employee ID value in the URL to this ID property in our component code behind class. So all that is left right now to do is use this employee ID value, retrieve the respective employee details and display. We are going to use this iEmployee service to retrieve employee details. At the moment within this interface, we don't have a method that returns employee by ID. So let's include that. So the return type is going to be task of employee because we are going to get the employee object by ID and let's call the method get employee. And to this method, obviously we have to pass the ID of the employee whose details we want. Next, let's provide the implementation. So let's open our employee service file and implement the interface. We have the method signature generated right here. Let's also make this method async and the implementation of this method is going to be very similar to this get employees method. So let's copy this line and paste it here. Now to retrieve employee by ID, our API service endpoint is API slash employees slash the employee ID. So let's pass the incoming employee ID and this endpoint is going to return a single employee object, not an array. Next, within our employee details component, to be able to retrieve employee data, we need to inject this iEmployee service. And remember, to inject a service into a Blazor component, we use inject attribute. So first, let's create a property of type iEmployee service, bring in the required namespace, and let's call this property employee service and decorate it with the inject attribute. Next, we need a public property of type employee. This is the property our view will bind to to display the employee data. So let's bring in the required namespace. Remember, 
the best place to retrieve data for a component is the component lifecycle method on initialized async. And the easiest way to generate the method signature is to simply type the keyword override and then press spacebar and you can see all the methods that you can override. And the method that we want to override is on initialized async. On this injected employee service, we have get employee method. And to this method, we need to pass the ID of the employee. Where are we going to get it from? Remember, this ID property will be automatically populated with the ID value in the URL. And this is of type string because we are retrieving the ID value from the URL. So it will be read as a string. But this method expects the employee ID value as an integer. So let's use int.parse to convert that to an integer. This is an async method. So let's use the await keyword. And let's also not forget to make this method async. And finally, store the result in our public property employee. All that is left is from our view, bind the employee property and display the details. For styling, we're going to use bootstrap card. This is standard HTML and some bootstrap styling classes. Nothing really specific to Blazor. So what we have here is a bootstrap card with a card header, card body and card footer. Within the card header, we want to display the employee full name. And for that, we're going to use this public property employee. So let's use an H1 element here and display employee first name and last name with a space in between. And in the card body, we are displaying employee photo path, employee ID, email, and department ID. We'll discuss how to display the department name instead of department ID in our upcoming videos because department ID doesn't really make sense to the end user. And then in the card footer, when we click the back button, we want to go back to the employee list component. So I'm going to set the href attribute to a single forward slash. If you're wondering why a single forward slash, well, that's because this is the route that we have specified using this at page directive to get to this employee list component. Now, on this employee list component, we have the view button. When we click this view button, we want to send the user to this employee details component. And here's the route to get to this component. So let's copy this and use it on the view button within our employee list component. Now we're going to execute a C sharp expression here. So let's use the at character. We're going to use C sharp string interpolation to build the URL dynamically. So let's use the dollar symbol and the URL is employee details slash the ID of the employee whose details we want to view. And where are we going to get the employee ID from? Well, we can get it from this loop variable employee. Notice on this, we have employee ID, close the string, interpolation, double quote, parenthesis, and then finally, the href attribute, double quote. At the moment, we are on employee list component. This employee ID is one. Notice when I click the view button, the URL changes to employee details slash one, and our employee details component is rendering this specific employee details. When we click the back button, we go back to the employee list component. This employee ID is three. So when I click view, notice in the URL, we have the employee ID three. Now, what happens if we don't specify the employee ID in the URL? We see the message, sorry, there's nothing at this address. That's because this route is not mapped to any component within our application. To get to the employee details component in the URL, we must include the employee ID, but we want to make this ID route parameter optional. Optional route parameters are not directly supported. However, what we can do is include another route without the employee ID route parameter. With a second route in place, we can also get to this employee details component by just navigating to this path slash employee details. But the question that we should answer is, which employee details should we display if we don't get the employee ID value in the URL? Well, we can specify a default value. If a value for employee ID is present in the URL, use that value. Otherwise, use this default value of one. Notice, now, when we specify a value for the employee ID in the URL, we see that respective employee details. If we don't specify a value, we see employee details 
whose ID is 1 because 1 is the default value we specified. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.